What's cracking YouTube? It's your boy Vampire. I'm really excited to bring you guys this video because this is one of my favorite, favorite things to do in RuneScape right now. And I've yet to make a PVM method type of video. Um, and there's gonna be more guides like this to come, especially if it's something that you guys like. Uh, if you guys watch any of my streams, you'll know that I love Nightmare. I basically go ahead and I park myself in Nightmare. And uh, if you haven't seen any of the streams, the link will be in the description down below. Go ahead and join and come say hi sometime and come boss with us. We have a, we have a great time, we're pretty funny. To give you a really rough understanding of how much money can be made here, it's quite a bit. Uh, when the prices were much higher before leagues happened, it was anywhere between 10 to 15 mil GP per hour on a median scale. If you got lucky, you were making 20 to 30 mil GP per hour. If you're unlucky, you were making five to 10. Um, right now, with the new and adjusted prices, it's still well in the five to seven mil GP per hour, making it still the best um, GP per hour PVM method, in my opinion. The items that you can receive uh, range from uh, Nightmare Staff, Inquisitor's Great Helm, Inquisitor's Top, Inquisitor's Bottom, and of course the Inquisitor's Mace. Furthermore, on a separate drop table, you have the Eldritch Orb, the Volatile Orb, and the Harmonized Orb. Um, all of which are really expensive items other than the Nightmare Staff, which hopefully you won't be that, that guy or gal that gets the Nightmare Staff. There's a 1 in 120 chance of rolling on the Inquisitors or the Nightmare Staff drop table, which is relatively great because these kills don't take too long when you get the hang of it. There's a 1 in 600 chance of rolling the Orb drop table, which again, isn't terrible whatsoever when you're doing four to five minute long kills. I'm really excited to be sharing this video with you guys. Um, and I'd love to know from you, what PVM methods and guides do you want me to make next? Um, I had a lot of fun making this video and uh, we got a drop, a loot. Um, so stick around and see what that looks like. And right when you thought we forgot about the 50 mil giveaway, we didn't. It's time to find out who won the 50 mil giveaway from our four bill Oda Block risk fight video. Um, best of luck to all of you guys. Thank you for liking and commenting that video. Your guys' support means everything to me. You have no clue. Um, best of luck. Okay. Um, filter duplicate users. Um, include replies to comments. Nope. Get YouTube comments. Unique commenters, 74. Ah, best of luck. Khalid Sultan As Al Halahi. I may have misspelled your name, but uh, or mispronounced your name. But congratulations, dude! You just won 50 mil. Um, if you can go ahead and please make sure that your private chat is going to be on for the next 24, 48, or 72 hours um, after you see this video, that would be awesome. Um, rock on. Congrats, dude. So welcome to my nightmare guide. Let's jump straight into it. As far as required stats and quests go, really the only requirement is having Priest and Peril finished so you have access to Mortania. Now I do suggest having 85 plus attack, strength, defense, and magic, as well as having either a Taste of Hope or Ghost Ahoy finished for faster travel to the Nightmare. So now let's jump into the gear and inventory. Even for the low budget setups, I will always suggest a bludgeon because of how efficient it is at being a crush weapon. Now as far as the inventory goes for a low budget, really you would just want a trident, an occult necklace, and an imbued god cape. Otherwise, making sure that you have super combat potions, super restores, relicims balms, and some ceridomen brews. Other than that, you can fill your inventory with anglers. Moving over to a more medium type of budget, I would go ahead and add an amulet of blood fury 
a face guard, and Bandos Tassets, as well as Primordial Boots or Ferocious Gloves if you can afford them. I would still stick to the bludgeon. Now moving on to the medium budget inventory, the only things that I would add here are the Ceridome and Godsword for its special attack, as well as the Tormented Bracelet. Otherwise, I would still keep my Super Combats, Super Restore Potions, Bellisim's Walms, Ceridome and Brews, and my Anglers, of course. And last but not least, if you are a baller and you are interested in balling out on a high budget setup, I would suggest going in full Inquisitors as well as a Scythe. This will give you literally the maximum DPS possible for Nightmare and practically guarantee you to be the MVP every time. Now, as far as the inventory is concerned, I would use the Sanguinesti Staff for its healing abilities. I would go ahead and also add the Ancestral Top as well as the Ancestral Bottom for their magic damage bonuses. Otherwise, I would still use the same pot rotation. Super Combats, Super Restores, Relisim's Balms, Ceridome and Brews, and Anglerfish. Now just keep in mind, you can always pick and choose items from the high, medium, and the low budget to create your own inventory setup. Let's now talk about the three most efficient ways to get to the Nightmare. The first and the most efficient way revolves around using the Draken's Medallion, which is received from the quest A Taste of Hope. You would teleport to Ver Sinhaza, which is the theater of blood. Once you're over here, you're gonna want to run south, easily use the bank, drop your medallion, grab one dose of stamina potion, pre-angler, pre-stamina, fill up your inventory back with your anglers, and begin the run. I'm going to go ahead and put a routed map overlay over this run so you know exactly where to run to. But effectively, you're going to be running north to the little town called Slepe, and then you're going to be running east to the house closest to the church and going downstairs. Once you make it downstairs, you're gonna to wanna to run immediately east. And once you've made it to about this three-way section, the first three-way section, you're gonna to wanna to run north. It's pretty obvious that you're getting to somewhere when you start running north and you see all the NPCs here. Now for your first time, before you get to fight Nightmare, you have to speak to Shura. So go ahead and click talk and just go through the entire dialogue with her. Once you're done with that, you'll be allowed to fight the nightmare. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second and what's debatably the most commonly used method to get to the nightmare. Using your Ecto file and having 10K coins, go ahead and teleport to the Ecto Funtus altar, run north to the docks right here and hit travel with Andras. Now it's worth mentioning, if you pay Andras 1 million GP, you'll never have to pay him the 10k coins for the ride again, which could be useful if this is your primary method of transportation. Once you hit travel, he pops you out at the dock that's right by Theater of Blood, and you do the same run. And it's the same run from here. You run east, once you reach the three-way split, you run north. Super simple. The only reason I don't love this method is because it does technically take two extra inventory spots for the coins and for the Acto file. I typically just use a minigame teleport or a, or a home teleport to leave the nightmare because I want to maximize my inventory. And now lastly, let's talk about the third most efficient way to get to Nightmare. If you don't have the Ecto file, you grab a Fankenstrain's teleport tablet from the GE. 
with your 10k in your inventory because we will still be using Andras. Once you've teleported to Finkenstrain's castle, you just run east. And once you reach Andras, it's the same run again. You run north, then you run east. You've arrived. So throughout the duration of your fight with the Nightmare, you'll be encountering multiple different types of NPCs, all of which are going to be dangerous during your fight with the Nightmare. The Nightmare spawns the husks in sets of two. The targeted players will be frozen until the husks are killed. Now, the blue skinny husk uses magic, while the bulkier husk uses range, both of which can have their damage fully negated if you're using the correct prayer. It is still wise to kill them as soon as possible so you can be released from that frozen state. Now the next unfortunate NPC you'll have to encounter, you'll find in phase two, and they're called parasites. They actually go into you and they will grow and burst out of you and deal a lot of damage if you don't drink your Relicim's Balm or your Sanfu serums. Once they burst out of you, they will start healing the nightmare at an extremely quick rate until they're fully killed. Again, when drinking your Sanfu or your Relicim's Balm, this will weaken the damage you take when the parasite bursts out from you. And again, the parasites only spawn in phase two. Now, lastly, you're going to be meeting the Sleepwalkers which will come at the end of each phase and signify that you've finished that respective phase. The number of sleepwalkers spawned depends on how many players are in the current party. When they spawn, they'll be spawning to the left and to the right of the four respective pillars in the room. They each have 10 HP, but will die instantly upon taking any damage, no matter what weapon you're using. After all of the sleepwalkers are killed, the Nightmare will charge a blast that hits all players for a minimum of 5 damage and can deal over 70. The damage is unavoidable, you have to kill all of them. If you're soloing the Nightmare and you do not kill your sleepwalker in time, the damage will instantly kill you. Now that we've covered the NPC encounters during your fight with the Nightmare, Let's talk about her auto attacks. She attacks using melee, magic, and range. Now it is important to note that only the quote unquote tank will be taking the melee attacks. The tank will be identified as the person within the party that has the highest defense bonus. As long as everyone else is standing 90 degrees or farther away from the tank, they will never take any melee attack damage. Moving on to the Nightmare's magic attack. When during the fight, she'll primarily be using magic and range. Her magic attack starts with her dragging her claws on the ground and spinning around with pink bursts of energy flying around her. The magic attack sounds like this. And lastly, let's talk about the Nightmare's ranged attack. Her ranged attack begins with her twisting her body around and contorting her arms, making a bone breaking or bone snapping kind of sound. It sounds just like this. Now, I do think it's worth noting that you can use either audio or visual cues to know exactly what to pray against the nightmare. I personally listen for audio cues, so I change my prayer based on what I'm hearing. I play with my game sounds super high. And the last thing that we need to cover are the nightmare's special attacks. Now we've covered some of them within the NPC encounter section, but the ones that we haven't covered are as follows. You have the Grasping Claws, or also known as Portals. Portals will happen in all three phases. Portals 
are going to be little black holes that spawn under the nightmare and under every other individual player as well as everywhere around the map. Right when you see or hear the portals coming, you want to immediately step one to two tiles away from your current tile. If you don't, you'll be taking a significant amount of damage. Next, we have flower power. You heard me right. We're calling it flower power. This is when the nightmare splits the room into four segments. Now, you'll see two rows of flowers that are alive. And that segment that's created by those two rows is the safe segment to stand in. Now, you don't necessarily want to stand within that segment. You're going to want to stand on the actual row of flowers. The tank will stand individually on one row and everyone else will stand on the other row. This is to maintain that 90 degree angle away from you, the rest of the team, from the tank. So you will not take any melee attack damage. Flower power will only occur in phase one. Next, we have her spores. Spores will only happen in phase three. Spores are going to be little mushrooms that are spawned sporadically around the fight zone. If you're within one tile of any of these spores, they'll instantly burst and turn off your run energy, forcing you to walk for the next 15 to 20 seconds, which is really not helpful during your fight with Nightmare. Next, we have a special attack known as Curse which is quite honestly the most annoying one. She's going to shift all of your protect prayers one over to the right. Now what I mean by that is if you're praying protect from magic, you're gonna be protecting from range, and if you're praying protect from range, you'll be protecting from melee, and if you're protecting from melee, you'll be protecting from magic. The only way to really master this is through time and practice. Her curse special attack will only occur in phase two. And lastly, and certainly the most dangerous of the nightmare special attacks you'll find in phase three. This is called Surge. She'll do her teleport animation where she jumps up and into the ground. She'll then come up at one of the corners or edges of the room. Depending on what direction she's facing, she will immediately charge right through her direct line of sight, dealing a devastating amount of damage to whomever is within that range. Now that we've covered everything you need to know about the Nightmare, let's go ahead and watch a full kill run through. And at the end, you can also see what the payout looks like. So we're starting a fresh kill. The Nightmare starts with a range attack and quickly moves into a magic attack. A good pro tip would be to just hover your cursor over the other prayer that you're not praying. So if I'm praying range, I would hover my cursor over the mage prey until I got the hang of it. Now she gives us her portals. As you saw, they quickly spawned up from under us and then we all moved off our portal tile. She's now jumping right into flower power, which will only deem the northeastern corner of the map as safe. We also happen to take her shield down right at the same time that she did flower power, so we're all maging the pillars from the safe spot. Now that we took all the pillars down, we got unlucky and we got the husks and the sleepwalkers at the same time. In this situation, if you're stuck by a husk, just use your staff to mage your sleepwalker. So now we're jumping into phase two. I've just been impregnated by the parasite, so you're going to see me quickly take a sip of my sand few to cure myself. And just a few seconds later, the parasite will be given birth and we have to kill it as soon as possible so it doesn't heal the nightmare. 
Ah, now she just dropped her curse. Special attack, which shifted all of our prayers over one to the right. So right now when I'm praying range, it's actually me praying mage. And you can see that my prayers are shifted once over to the right. We just took her shield down, so we're gonna go throw on our mage switch and kill the pillars. Now that we've killed the pillars, we get our sleepwalkers, we kill them all, and now we're gonna move into phase three. Jumping quickly into phase three, she quickly teleports and drops her surge attack. As you can see, she teleported to the easternmost edge of the room, looked to the westernmost, and darted through. If anyone was standing there in that line of sight of hers, they would have took a devastating amount of damage, enough to one-hit them. And now moving on, she does her final spores special attack. And as you can see, our friend in the south had a spore explode because they were standing too close and now they're chanting yawn which signifies that they have had their run energy disabled we just finished taking that shield down going to kill the pillars one last final time and we did it and we're gonna go ahead and check the loot And it looks like everyone's spamming something, so we open up a chat. And would you look at that? Our mate, Giant Poop, got an Inquisitor's Plate skirt, which ended up being a really awesome 60 mil split for everyone. Guys, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys were able to learn from this video. I hope I was able to be descriptive enough and explain everything thoroughly. Um, if there's any anything that I wasn't clear on, let me know how I can be better in making these guides for you guys. Um, I hope through this video you can start trying Nightmare or even optimizing your gear and your inventory. Um, and dude, go ahead and drop it in the Discord and let me know that you want to go bossing sometime. I love bossing with friends from the Discord. We do it every single night. Um, the link to the Discord is going to be in the description. Give me a shout. Anyways. Rock on and see you next time.